Hello everyone, my name is Chen Shai Shi, and I'm a PhD student at University of Virginia. It is a great pleasure for me to be here and present our paper, An Attackability Perspective on No Sensing Adversary Multiplayer Multi Band Days. This is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Tsongsheng. Multi Band Days is a simple yet powerful model in sequential learning and decision making. It captures the trade off between exploration and exploitation. At each time slot, the player faces a set of actions, namely key arms, and she can pull out one out of these arms. Then she observes the state of the pulled arm and uses this state as information for the decision making in the future. While being simple, this model has found applications in clinical trial, community radio, recommender system, and etc. In this work, we started a decentralized diverse realm multiplayer multi band days. It is still considered of K-arms, but there are M players simultaneously playing these arms. Also, an oblivious adversary select like loss sequence for the arms, which can be arbitrary and has no stochastic structure. But we assume that the losses are bounded between zero and one. The player's goal is to minimize the uh, expected regret. However, the regret definition here uh, on the slide that are not directly count the loss generated by the adversary, but the true loss suffered by the players, which is the FMT here, which will be defined shortly. And the key constraint of this system is that it is a decentralized system, so there is no uh, explicit communication between players. As I just mentioned, the regret definition counts the true loss suffered by the players, which is the result of a key concept of collision. This is also the key difference between multiplayer bandits and standard bandits, especially when there are more than one player selecting the same arm simultaneously. A collision happens on this arm. The collision indicator on the slide formally defines this event, which is the EKKT here. Further, if a collision happens, all players that select this arm suffer a loss of one, which is the maximum loss, regardless of the original adversary loss. And on the other hand, when there's no collision on that arm, the player just directly get the original loss. The true loss on the slide, the NNT, summarizes two scenarios. The figure on the top also gives an example. Player 1 and 2 select arm 2 at the same time, so they both get lost 1. Player 3 get, uh, select arm 5 alone, so she gets the original loss, which is a 0 0.6 here. With collision introduced, there are two feedback models in the study of multi bandits, multiplayer multi bandits. The one is the collision sensing model. By the name, it means that the player has access to the collision indicator, and they can make a decision with that information. The other one is the no sensing model. In this model, players do not have information of the collision indicator. As a result, as shown in the figure, the lot one can either be directly generated by the adversary or it can be the result of a collision. And uh, the player has no way to distinguish between these two settings, uh, two scenarios. The figure at the bottom shows that uh, these two cases. Uh, the figure on the left shows that player one and player two suffer a lot one from collision. Figure on the right shows that there's no collision, but player two directly receive a loss one from the adversary. Without the collision information, uh, these two scenarios is indistinguishable for player two. This lack of collision information makes the no sensing setting a much harder problem than collision sensing. And there is a, a limited uh, literature that uh, studies this setting. In this work, uh, we focus on this hard problem, namely the adversarial multiplayer multi bandits in the no sensing setting. In particular, we discover that there are two hardness dimensions in this problem. And the first one is the dimension of multiple players, which is revealed in the previous work. And in particular, it does not utilize any information sharing among players, which results in very limited player coordination. That's when the number of players increases, it becomes harder and harder to get lower graphs, which results in that its regret result has an exponential dependency on n, which is number of players. And its regret result is shown on the slide. Uh, in this work, we take another path to incorporate implicit communication. 
which uses collision or not to transmit one bit information between the players. However, as I just mentioned before, in the no sensing setting, loss one can come indistinguishably from collision or from the adversary. Thus, it can be a tool for the adversary to attack the implicit communication. If such an uh, attack succeeds, it will, re it will result in catastrophe influence on later exploration or exploitation. Namely, if uh, one uh, implicit communication fails, the following exploration or exploitation may suffer a linear loss. So we started this problem from the perspective of the adversary's mechanism in generating these loss ones. In other words, the, their mechanism of attacking. Especially, we involve one new concept of the attackability, which represents an upper bound of such mechanisms. In, in particular, we propose two kinds of attackabilities. The first one is called the local attackability. It characterizes the maximum length of some continuous lost ones. This concept captures the longest duration that no communication has happened. For the local attackability, its order with respect to the horizon t and with respect as uh, t to the power of alpha. And the alpha here, uh, we call it the local attackability parameter. The second kind is the global attackability, which takes a uh, like overall view that it represents the total amount of loss that are assigned on any arm during the horizon. In other words, they represent the overall attack during the horizon. Correspondingly, we define the global attackability parameter, which is a beta here. Both concept of attackability captures the worst case in implicit communication, and we are trying to find these worst cases. However, know that these attackabilities over the parameters alpha, beta, are not restrictions on the adversary. Instead, they let us categorize, uh, categorize the adversaries. In each category, there are still many adversaries, and any adversary that belong to a certain category. More importantly, we do not necessarily need the player to be aware of this parameter, but they, uh, we design algorithms that can adapt to them automatically. Here's a, pre a preview of the results, uh, regret results. The one labeled in blue uh, is the uh, uh, prior result that has an exponential dependency on the number of players, while the ones labeled in red is our obtained result that they shift the dependency from M to the parameter of attackabilities. The following figure gives a numerically uh, illustration of these different dependencies. In the first one, the attackabilities are fixed, while the number of players is increasing. The blue line shows uh, the exponential dependency of M, while our proposed A2C2 algorithms does not change much in terms of the number of players changing. The second figure shows with a fixed number of players, the previous result does not change when the attackability changes. However, the A2C2 algorithm has an exponential dependency on the attackability. In other words, the A2C2 algorithms and the previous proposed algorithm, they all have their uh, advantages in different regions. So we say that we reveal that this is like two orthogonal dimension of a hardness. So let's talk about the algorithm detail of A2C2s. All the A2C2 algorithms proceed in the iteration of exploration phase and communication phase. We use the term matter on to denote a matching between players and arms. In the exploration phase, the player one, we should refer to as a leader, run, runs an uh, EXP3 algorithm, which is the famous algorithm uh, in adversary bandits. And they run this ESP3 algorithm over the meta arms and select one meta arm, which is one matching for all the players to play for uh, the following batch of time steps. This batch structure is adopted to lower the frequency of the communication phase. And uh, in the communication phase, the leader sends the assigned arms in that chosen meta arm to the followers via collision. Uh, as I just mentioned, they use uh, no collision for bit zero, collision for bit one. Similar algorithm structures have been adopted in collision sensing works, uh, for example, the one list here, but we investigate the no sensing setting. 
especially we propose four kinds of A2C2 algorithms, and each of them are under a different scenario, and namely the alpha aware and the alpha unaware A2C2 with focus on local attackability. The beta aware or beta unaware A2C2 with focus on global attackability. First, let's going to talk about the alpha aware A2C2, which is the most simple one, but it contains the basic structure of the A2C2 families. Uh, in this one, we assume that the players have knowledge of alpha. The first important component is that we notice there exists a, a symmetry in the communication with force condition. First, in the no-sensing setting, even in this no-sensing setting, B1 is transmitted by collision, and it can be always perceived correctly. However, on the other hand, B0, which is transmitted by no collision, can be attacked. Thus, it results uh, like this asymmetry structure that B1 cannot be attacked, B0 can be attacked. So naturally, uh, in uh, information theory language, it can be formulated as a Z-channel model shown in the figure. In this Z-channel model, since we are trying to do reliable communication, it's natural to consider that can we involve error correction coding? This is quite a natural idea. Following this natural idea, uh, we, uh, since now the players they know Orphan, so they can use error correction codes and outpower local attackability of the adversary. So we have adopted this kind of repetition code whose block length dominates the adversary attackability. So uh, in this way, uh, the implicit communication are guaranteed to be successful. So the two key ideas are first, we recognize this is the uh, communication structure correlates uh, corresponds to a Z-channel model. Then in this Z-channel model, we propose to use an error correction coding to address the issue of reliable communication. As a summary, in the alpha aware at GC2, the leader first chooses a meta arm, then he transmits the arm to followers, which has the encoding staff, uh, force collision communication staff, and the coding staff. At last, all the players enter exploration phase and pull the assigned arm for a certain duration. Then the same duration goes on again. So with knowledge of uh, alpha aware at GC2, we move forward to not knowing alpha and propose the alpha unaware A2C2 algorithms. Without the knowledge of alpha, a natural idea to perform estimation. So we design an escalation estimation scheme. We start with the estimation alpha prime and zero, and then the estimation only increases upon every communication failures, and it never decreases. So it's an escalation scale. If at some time the estimation, uh, the estimation alpha prime is larger than the true value of alpha, then no communication failure uh, will happen anymore and the escalation stops. So uh, one problem that remains is that how can we determine or how can we detect a communication that fails, especially this is a decentralized setting. So to address this issue, we incorporate the idea of error detection code Especially, a special constant weight code is adopted. It, in particular, with a base sequence length of capital K, if the leader wants to transmit an um, index lowercase k, it only says that k is bit at one, at bit one, and the remaining, remaining k, uh, capital K minus one base at bit zero. Then he repeats this bit uh, for a certain duration in the transmission. So this is um, error detection repetition code. As shown in the figure, the receiver outputs the block indices that have all bit ones. If there's only one such block, as in the case labeling S in the figure, the communication is successful. If there is one more than one such block, as shown in the one labeling F in the figure, then the communication error happens. If the communication is successful, the estimation of alpha prime is maintained. Otherwise, the community fails and the estimation scheme increases. This, actual, this error detection code actually nicely incorporates the structure of the Z-channel model we mentioned before. And there, with these ideas, there's actually one remaining challenge, which is how to synchronize the estimation alpha. Since each player do their estimation alone and they, need to, they don't share this kind of information. Intuitively, additional communication is required 
or we can adopt such additional communication for synchronization. We know that the worst case during this communication for synchronization is that the uneven attacks from the adversary. In particular, during this process, if the adversary only attacks a subgroup of players, those players in the subgroup, they would update the RF estimation, while the others would not. Then the synchronization is lost. To address this of scum, we return to a key idea in the adversary bandits, which is randomization. Especially, we design the following procedure. The follower reports their communication error to the leader. The leader, which is the last step, is called the uplink step. The leader then broadcasts the aggregate result to the followers. This step is called the downlink step. This and this uplink and downlink process keep iterating for a random number of times. With this iteration, the adversary actually needs to attack exactly the last run of downlink to destroy synchronization. However, this last run, since it is random, so it is hard to be exactly attacked. attacked. Uh, the main reason behind this is that the attack and other runs are actually broadcasting, so the attack will fail. So this uh, random uh, synchronization guarantees that the synchronization is successful with a high probability. By combining these ideas together, we obtain the alpha on where a 2 c 2 algorithm compared with the aforementioned alpha where a 2 c 2 The main challenge is that we involve error detection, repetition code, and the random lens communication for synchronization. Uh, with the time limitation, we here only give a brief sketch of the beta aware and unaware to situ. First, recall that global attackability can be revealed, uh, viewed as an overall budget for communication. So instead of the one time budget in local attackability, it is not necessary to prevent the global attackability in every communication phase. As a result, we can drop less powerful calls for error correction and detection as long as the attackability cost loss is non dominating. Here is a brief uh, presentation of the regret of our H2C2 and the H2C2 algorithms. You can see that, as I mentioned before, they all have exponential dependency on alpha or beta, but they do not have exponential dependency on n. Note that when alpha equals one, uh, or alpha equals zero, which means that there's nearly no attacks. The alpha aware A2C2 can return to the known result in collision sensing, which is of order t to the power of uh, two or three. Further, when alpha equals one or beta equals one, which means the adversary can actually asymptotically attack all time steps. Um, in this way, there's no implicit communication can happen. So the alpha A2C2 algorithm naturally suffer linear regress in t. As a summary, this work introduced the concept of attackability. So we can categorize the voice series with their attackability and design algorithm for them. With the attackability introduced, we designed the alpha uh, A2C2 family of algorithms, namely four of them, and several new ideas are incorporated from information theory and the communication theory, especially the um, error detection code, error correction code. The A2C2 algorithms are proved to have attackability dependent sublinear regress. However, they limit the former uh, exponential dependency on the number of players. Philosophically speaking, this work revealed a new hardness dimension of attackability, uh, which uh, complement the previous study of the uh, hardness dimension of multiple players. Also, a full version of this work containing all the details is published at uh, our triple E journal on selected area in information theory titled on no sensing adversary multiplayer multi bandits with collision communications. Welcome to read it and thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and the conference. Thank you again.